Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Fiscal Policy and Exchange Rates. In this video we're going to look at the impact of expansionary fiscal policy that is financed by a deficit, a government deficit in the economy, its impact across a range of macroeconomic variables. So in our case here, we are looking at expansionary fiscal policy and we're looking at it through a deficit situation. So the government is running a deficit, its expenditure is greater than its tax intake. So deficit scenario. Now, in this case here, we start off with a Keynesian cross model. And for the Keynesian cross, what we have is expenditure here in the economy. And this is made up of C plus I plus G plus net export. So all the expenditure in the economy. And this is related to a 45 degree line, which relates symmetry between expenditure and national income in the economy. The equilibrium point then between expenditure in the economy and national income is represented by A here on the Keynesian cross and this gives us a spending level, let's call that E0 and it also gives us a national income level, let's say Y0 down here. Now due to the deficit financing the expansionary fiscal uh, policy what we have here is the expenditure line in the Keynesian cross will increase, it will raise up, and we can indicate that with our arrows here. And when it raises up, what happens is it stimulates extra spending in the economy and extra income. So this is a multiplier effect whereby the initial spend, which is represented by the distance between uh, the two lines, are increased in the economy via the Keynesian multiplier effect and the impact on national income is a higher level up here at point B which shows us E1 the impact of the expansionary policy fueled by the deficit and it also shows us the increase in national income which we'll call Y1 over here. Now to trans this, translate this over onto the right hand side we look at the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model so over on this side, we have AD, aggregate demand. We have short run aggregate supply represented by the upward sloping line. And we also have a long run aggregate supply curve. With all of these three in equilibrium, what we have is a point A here on the graph where the economy is at its potential output level with an inflation rate of inflation one and a GDP growth rate of GDP one down here. So that was the starting point in the economy, but we know that there was expansionary fiscal policy due to uh, the government running a deficit to finance it. And this means that the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right, which is expansionary fiscal policy effect. So we have AD1 in this case here, indicated by the arrow shifting AD curve to the right. We have a new short run equilibrium point, which shows us that the inflation rate increases due to a deficit driven expansionary fiscal policy to inflation two. And also in the short run, we have an impact on the real variable, which is GDP growth rate and that has gone up to GDP2 in this case here. So both key variables have increased in our market. If we move over to the bond market, what, me, what happens here is over in the bond market, we have the supply of bonds uh, issued by the government in this case here, and we have the demand for bonds by investors in the economy. Demand and supply being equal will give us an equilibrium level, and that will be the price of the bond in the economy, P1, and it will also show us the quantity of the bonds in the economy, and this is point A. Now, when the government increases the bonds that it issues uh, due to the deficit, it has to make up for this in some way. So to finance that deficit situation up here, it can issue bonds uh, to finance extra spending. So what that will do is it will shift the supply curve for bonds 
to the right so that's an issue of more government debt the supply curve shifts to the right to s1 will indicate that and because the supply curve has increased we reach a new equilibrium in the bond market of b and what this shows us is the price level goes down in the bond market so the price of buying a bond the purchase price decreases and the quantity of them increases what we know as well is that there's an inverse relationship between the bond price itself between bond price and the yield on a bond so the interest rate so what this means in our situation is if the price is dropping of the bond we know that the interest rate the yield must be increasing so this means that the cost of borrowing for the government is increasing in the economy now let's try and trace through the impacts of this on the market for loanable funds in the domestic economy and the market for foreign currency exchange so we have the market for loanable funds on our left hand side and we have the market for foreign exchange over on the right hand side between those is the net capital outflow in the economy the net capital outflow of funds based on private funds uh, leaving the economy and brought into the economy to purchase domestic assets so with the market for loanable funds we have a supply of loanable funds in the economy coming from savings and we have the demand for loanable funds as well and this comes from the demand to invest in the economy where they equal one another where supply equals demand in this market for loanable funds we have the real interest rate derived or and it gives us the quantity of loanable funds in that market as well so the quantity one down here so in that market for loanable funds we start off with an equilibrium point here of R1 now in this situation what has happened in terms of the government policy and the deficit is the supply of loanable funds in the economy due to savings because savings comes from both households and the government the supply of savings reduces in this case here so because of the deficit the government is not taking in as much tax as it's spending this reduces national saving in the economy and what it causes is savings to reduce so we go from s back to s1 here and the equilibrium goes from a to point b now the impact on the econ economy of less saving is that the real interest rate the real cost of borrowing money increases so in our case it increases from r1 up to r2 when that increases in the economy from r1 up to r2 up here what it impacts on is the net capital outflows from the economy now when the interest rate goes up so we'll start off here with our r1 first which we can trace through to our net capital outflow market so we start off with r1 and at r1 we had a net at capital outflow down here of net capital outflow one because the interest rate has increased in the economy this means that there is less incentive for money to leave the economy and for investors to invest outside of that economy therefore when the real interest rate rises up to r2 what we see is a reduction in net capital outflow so when interest rates go up domestic investors keep more money in the home economy and foreign investors invest more in the home economy now in this case here the net capital outflows has reduced to point b which means that we can indicate that on our graph at net capital outflow two here which has reduced in the economy now that has a direct effect over on the right hand side and the direct effect of that is on the foreign currency exchange market over here so in the foreign currency exchange market we have the demand for a foreign currency over here and this demand is coming from the demand for net exports so we put this in here as net exports they haven't been changed in our case here but we also have the supply of foreign currency on the market and the supply of foreign currency is based on net capital outflows 
and the net capital outflow in this case here has reduced. So we can indicate this in our economy with showing the supply curve shifting over to the left in this case here. We will indicate that with a couple of arrows and we will say that the supply curve has gone to S1. So what does that mean for our foreign exchange rate, for our exchange rate in this economy? Well, we started off at S and D where we had an exchange rate in the economy of E1 and we had foreign currency out there in the economy as well. Let's say quantity down here. Now, because of the reduced supply of currency, the net capital outflow reduction, what we have is a new equilibrium at point B, and that means that the exchange rate has appreciated. It has increased in our case here. So the quantity has reduced and the currency has appreciated. And what this will mean is if your currency appreciates, what tends to happen is it has a negative effect on the competitiveness of your economy. So the competitiveness effect is that an appreciation reduces exports because they become more expensive. It increases imports and it generally means that your net exports uh, will start to decrease in this case here. So we have net exports decreasing because of the deficit that has fueled the expansionary fiscal policy. We also have over on the left hand side the market for loan loanable funds. We have the interest rate increasing over here and that's causing crowding out of private investment. So crowding out over here. So we have two negative impacts of the deficit that the government is running for the expansionary fiscal policy. Some of it is crowded out, private investment, and there is also a negative effect on net exports. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.